All right, welcome back. We're done with the, the break, waiting for the next match to start between Tyson and Strife Crow. Strife Crow had about 10 minutes to show up before the disqualification was going to be announced, but he is back. He actually has come uh, during the break. So Strife Crow and Thais will be coming up shortly afterwards. Now, we don't have the classes for the players, but at least we'll get to see the match. You know, I did mention this was one of the biggest matches of the day as far as the very end result of the rankings. Um, and this is definitely going to be exciting. Yeah, they're both basically bat battling for the first place yeah it's weird because in the ranking from what you can see it says that thais is you know fourth place but if he wins against strive crow he skyrockets at the top with a high tie break like a higher tiebreaker um or Let's maybe the that. equality i guess in strive crow they're going to be tied exactly but i think thais gets a higher tiebreaker for having beaten strive crow so that should be it well if they would have the exact same place and exact same tiebreaker then the, the winner of the placing is the man who wins in the, in the you know, match, personal yeah. match. Yeah, exactly. So if Thais and Strive end up equal, well, Thais will have the edge. Because he like if he if he does win, um, he'll get to, to be uh, ahead of Strive Crow. So we'll see exactly how that goes. We should be starting fairly soon. We don't have the deck list for the players, but we were talking about Druid and how both players favor that deck a lot. But you said Thais thinks it's a little weaker than maybe it used to be. So we'll yep. see exactly uh, what type of list he brings. I I have to say I'd like Thais to play a Control Warrior deck as well. Warrior deck? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. it's a deck that I, I don't see him very like play that I, hyper frequently. Would you say that Strivecore might bring a Freeze deck? I don't think so. Like he's almost he always plays favoring... Grinder Mage, right? Yeah, like the Grinder's Mage, the uh, Fatigue Mage kind of really weird decks which i cannot play because i'm too dumb for them so well they're very unique like strife it's the type of deck that if you didn't build it it doesn't play itself you know how sometimes yeah. you can pick up druid and it'll play itself you innervate on curve and you just play cards one after the other next and then you just force them into savage roar um, but a deck like grinder mage for instance doesn't play itself because you always are counting on the stuff that you've got in the deck and trying to find the best line of play, not right now, but multiple turns down the line. That's maybe what makes it a bit difficult to play. True. Yeah, yeah is that think, true? Uh, it's one of the strengths of Strife Crow, I think. Really well, big one. He's studying game design, so that's his strength. That's his skill, and uh, kudos to him. He, it pays off. Yeah, it definitely does. You can tell in the way that he plans out uh, his plays, just how... How deep he understands the game, like how much of the depth that he understands, because Hearthstone is not a very complex game, but it's got a lot of depth, right? Like it's always been claimed mm -hmm, to be exactly mm -hmm. that. Like there's not a lot of complexity, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> right, there's Dog, um, where like we have, there's not a lot of complexity in the way that, you know, in Magic the Gathering, sometimes you'll do one thing and it'll trigger a chain effect of like 25,000 things uh, back to one like next to one another and you have to think about plays that can interrupt yours but in Hearthstone we don't have that level of complexity but the depth of the plays uh, the... snipe. yeah of course um, <laughs> easy life uh, but in general I'd say it's a very it's a very shallow game with a huge uh, not a shallow game but a very simple game with a lot of depth in general yeah, that's which I think the... is, and Strive Crow is definitely perfect at that that's even the way the Blizzard promotes it right easy to learn hard to play Hard to master. Yeah, there's right. a lot of, and it, I mean, I guess sometimes I the RNG is overplayed a bit, right? Sometimes I guess it's overplayed by a lot of people. Um, it matters. Let's not, you know, kid ourselves. And the latter system does show how much RNG matters because you can be top, you know, top ten legend, and then at the very end, like the last two days of the season, you just drop a massive amount because of variance that happens very late. So the system seems to make RNG look like it's a bigger deal than it is. But it's kind of a part of the way the game plays, uh, by virtue of it being a card game. And drop entirely. Yeah, you might just, you know, get your account banned for <laughs> shady reasons. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what the, what happened there. But, I wonder what uh, happens actually when people get banned. Like, Blizzard doesn't disclose that and the teams are generally not super open about it. Um, what do you and I have to it? say, like, you just don't get any information about it. Blizzard just yeah. doesn't tell you anything. Would you favor transparency in those uh, decisions? I'd like transparency. I'm I'm not exactly the type of player who likes behind the scenes stuff to stay behind the scenes, um, mm -hmm. but at least from Blizzard, I think. But then again, that you know, some people will make the argument that 
This is my privacy or my privacy, depending on where you come from. Well, um, you're a public figure, so why would you? Right. <laughs> that's that's not how it works. When you when you're joining the pros and you're just a public figure, public player, and everything that is happening it. in your career, esports career, you sh it should be public, right? It's not like you, I don't know, were, were, you was uh, you were banned for private reasons. Yeah, it's actually related to the game itself. Yeah. You know, if you're playing, it's not as though you're playing Hearthstone and then somehow, um, you know, there's some problem where you go to a restaurant and something bad happens and that's publicized. That's that has nothing to do with the game. But when it comes to transparency regarding the infractions related to the game you're being paid to play, for instance, I think those should be a bit more transparent, at least from Blizzard's side. But then again, Blizzard doesn't even tell the some sometimes the players who get banned the, the specific reasons why they get banned. They just tell you we investigated and you're banned, so um, that's sometimes as much as you can get. True. Even as the individual itself. Well, we'll probably never know what happened yep. anymore. Naiman basically destroyed his Twitter. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But um, we're waiting on the uh, deck list for both players at the moment. Strife Crow said he arrived and he's going to be playing, but apparently there's a bit of a delay because he has yeah, to it's... build the decks. Still late, Crow. Yeah, <laughs> late, Crow. Uh, That's a nah. crow fist. You didn't, you didn't cast the crow fist? No, yeah, I know, I know, but I won't do it. <laughs> Lothar won't crow fist me. I, le I left you hanging, but you are not hanging, so... Yeah, whatever, man. doesn't matter. Yeah. All right, well... Okay, let's make bets at this point. I guess this is where we have to start betting on the decks that are going to be played. I, I, <laughs> I wanted to ask you, what do you want to bet on? Like, how much late will be the crow? Or... Uh, you know, there's, I'm sure there's a pun to be made with Game of Thrones and Crow. I'm pretty sure there's something there um, we have to work on, but we'll, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> All right, so we have the deck. <laughs> so Strive Crow is going to be playing Hunter, Warlock, Druid, and Thais has Rogue, Mage, and Warlock. So both players are going to be playing Warlock, and you said Thais didn't really favor Druid, and you're right. He obviously doesn't because he didn't bring it, mm -hmm. uh, and Strive Crow, however, did. So maybe Strife Crow feels like the deck is still potent enough to be justifiable in the metagame. Imagine if Thais will bring a ma um, Mech Mage against this lineup. Wow. Yeah, Mech Mage would be absolutely... Uh, if, I mean, if this I, I is a know. Zoo and Mech yeah. Mage... And, uh, Th if this is and, Zoo from you know, Strife, yeah. No, 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 I mean from Thais. If Thais will bring Zoo, Mech Mage and Rogue against this Droid, this Droid is sad. Yeah, this druid is really gone. Sad, like, it's gonna be really phase, dot PNG druid. Although Rogue does lose to Druid if the burst comes up fast enough. Um, I'm not gonna say it's an amazing matchup, but I think Druid has a pretty decent chance against it. And the Mech Mage matchup, although lopsided, isn't the worst thing. And I think, like you know, we've been harping on about Druid of the Flame and how bad of a card it was, and how a lot of people who play it don't like it. But against the Zoo deck. Um, it's usually at least somewhat useful. The only time where it doesn't really shine is when they have uh, a 3 2 and they use an abusive sergeant to buff it up or a dark iron dwarf. Yeah. So when you get it innervated, though, it's amazing. The value you can get out of it is it's just incredible. True. Well, all right. Uh, what's your prediction? What will Strive Crew bring first? I've. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I don't, I don't even know which deck is the slowest. Slowest. Yeah. I That's only gonna be the first deck. Handlock. Okay. So he's gonna he's gonna take a handlock to just you know wake himself up. Which slowly is slowly kinda... but surely. I just lied. Like if if handlock has a ten four giant, a ten five giant, this will be a really fast game. Well, right. how good does Rogue do against that? I mean, some of the Temple Rogues... I don't know if, if Thais favors that playstyle, but they tend to run BGH as well. Um, well, <clears throat> Rogue is... Um, in this ma matchup, is uh, really depending on a huge Blade Flurry. Yeah, which it won't get on turn 4, generally speaking. Yeah, well, the, how do you want to deal with a giant in, on turn 4? It's basically Thanos backstab, okay, eviscerate, yeah. or... Um, the combination of SI, yeah, combination of agents, SI and then deadly poisons and backstab because that also deals uh, eight and it deals eight to your face, but you can still manage after the first eight. Yeah, if you can kill the first giants, the second one is a problem. 
Uh, yeah. But I, I don't know what he's going to start with. I think, you know, if he's actually, you know, just trying to get... I don't know if he just woke up. Like, I have no idea why it took so long to get here. Um, but if you just woke up, then maybe taking a slow deck is the way to go. Or you go for face hunter, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like because you just like you don't have to think, you just drag things to face. Uh, you don't play on mobile because you might hit the wrong face. You might hit your yourself with your that quick face? shot. With quick shot, yeah. You You've never done that. Cop. Say what? You pull out an <laughs> e cop. With your pull out an e cop with a frostbolt face, yeah. Yeah. But like mobile is dangerous. It's really really dangerous. Don't Can play on just... mobile. We just got the information that Striker will go with Warlock and Tice will go with Warlock. So we'll Yay. be seeing a either Hello battle versus Zoo or it, it's a lifetime battle versus lifetime battle or it's a Zoo versus Zoo, which is basically play minion, play minion. If one of the guys plays Shadow Flame, he has a huge advantage. If not, then it's all about knife jugglers, right? And efficient. Yeah, I... And I think traits. it comes down to whoever gets the first swing, usually. Uh, I mean, I, a lot of Zulas don't even run Dark Bomb, right? Like, a lot I of them just play minions. None of them instead. are playing Dark Bombs. Exactly. So, uh, especially the after deck... implosions. Sorry for interrupting, but. Uh, no problem. Especially after implosions. If there will be no implosion, then maybe we should see some Dark Bombs in it. I, I, yeah, I, I think it would see play. The thing is, it's not mid range Warlock, right? Zoo is not mid range. So. The player, I'd say, who plays the more mid-range-ish Zoo has an edge because he might be running. Like, I've seen a lot of, you know, mid-range locks that seem to look like Zoo. Once they start rolling, you couldn't really tell a huge difference. Um, they have the eggs. They've got, you know, decent mid-game, like, early-game bodies without having the high progression that Zoo can pack. They won't snowball as fast, but once they reach the mid-game, the tempo gains are just as big. So if whoever plays mid-range versus the Zoo, I think mid-range typically has a slight edge. I'd say. True. Yeah. Well, well. Oh wow! We're jumping into the game. No way. No this way. This happened. No more no. risen sleeper. No more late crow. All right. Well, hopefully we get to see a bit of an interesting, you know, not mirror match because zoo versus zoo is pretty quick, typically speaking, and I'd rather see but something like complex, a headlock versus zoo. It is. It is. All right. It's showing complexity. Dun dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we see it's a zoo deck or mid range at the, at the very least at the bottom versus a handlock. I'd venture to say. I mean, I don't see. Although molten does make its appearance in you know mid range demon lock or demon handlock. That's true. So Ties will probably keep only the Nerubin egg and knife juggler, right? Turn one uh, knife juggler. Turn two Nerubin egg. Oh, it's kept in Urban Egg. Okay. Oh, there's a Void Color in it. Nice. I really love the Void Colors. Yeah, they're great. Oh, wow. There's a Kazan Mystic in Strapo's deck. Those two Molten Giants will be super important. Against the Zoo deck, definitely. I think uh, they're, they're actually the most important. As soon as you can get taunt them taunted up, Hellfire yeah. and Double Molten is just super strong. What's the next best thing he finds here? A watcher to set up Sun for Fury. a possible shadow flame later. Well, this is not bad. Oh, wow. that's a defender. Okay. That's defender. This might be hard for Tice. Well, he's got a pretty good hand, though. I just, like, the Void Caller needs to come in and do a lot of work for him. First Loot Holder. Then turn three Void Caller uh, into Die Wolf. That's so weak to Hellfire, so I wouldn't even play that. Most likely would be just tap into a creature. Yeah, tap into Voidwalker, I think, is pretty good. And the Sun Fury has been found for Strive Troll, making enabling those giants even easier. I think that's a really big draw for him. Now, it all depends how Tice will deal damage. Yeah, if he's, if he's going to pace himself, right? I, a lot of players know better than to just go full face unless they have to. And they often pace themselves to where you can't really play the Moltens as you'd like. I mean, I'm I'm not sure why he's playing that. Like he has Hellfire, right on ten four. I think maybe popping the spider is what he's looking for. I'm not too sure. 
it's got me a bit uh, bit puzzled but then again this is a very common trend right not a common you know trend but a common play a lot of people play sun fury as a two drop against aggro decks just to be able to you know stem some of the early game bleeding it basically acts as a pseudo dark bomb very often hmm now Thais is kind of thinking about maybe abyss of surgeon top then you you know buff the buff the spider go for the spider i don't know uh, you can get the spider to pop and the jugglers to do what it has to. The thing is, you're playing a bit into Hellfire uh, by doing this. I would favor the tap here. Instead of to playing get, the... Uh... To get deeper into the deck and still have... This, you know, you basically, uh, you, you basically um, do the same with Abusive Sergeant and Wolf Rider, right? Wow. Oh, wow. He extends even further on this board. I have to say, I'm, I'm honestly sure I like surprised this. here. Yeah. I think what happened is Strife Crow seemed to telegraph I have no removal by playing Sun Fury. Yeah, that's true. Maybe that's what he saw. And then he decided mm -hmm. to overextend, thinking maybe my opponent just doesn't have an answer. But he's going to get punished because those Molten Giants are about to hit the board. Um, Kazan Mystic Zombie Chow? It's that or Molten Zombie Chow. I don't even hate Molten Zombie Chow. Is that is there a reason not to play it? Do you yeah, really want? Do you I really need it to keep it later? No. You can just play Molten Giant and Zombie Chow. True. All right. So he taps into a probable cheaper. Molten, so five, he, he can't find seven from hand, so there's no lethal looming, even if everything lines up. Unless he's got, you know, double PO, in which case you just bow down. Um, if you had double power of whelming, you just have to take the loss. Abusive, an implosion is likely to kill the Molten. Hmm. Very it likely to kill the Molten. Molten. So, what about just going face? You play... What about the taunt that hits... Do you just get punished too hard for that? Not sure. This is a really tough situation for Thais. Yeah, it really is, honestly. Like, this is probably the closest... This is probably the most difficult turn he's gonna have this game. To be honest, like, this is where everything either goes really well for you or really wrong. And I don't, I don't dislike the idea of trading everything away. Like, you try for the implosion, see how much it hits for. If it's three, then you abusive start in your void caller and get the other void caller out. I think that's gonna have to be his play. It's either that or he's gonna try to get M straight up. Free M, so perfect. Perfect resolution here, but still, that doesn't seem to be going Ty's way, anyway. Yeah, not oh, from that. And 11 points of heal. So, Molten Giant, Defend of Argus, go perhaps, face. And just go face for 8 and let the Zulok handle this. Yeah, I would say so. You get a. You can take care of one giant. I would say. Oh, no, you. Man. Yeah, you can. You, you can kill one. The silence on the void caller is going to force oh. Thais to play the void caller manually here. Very nice. That's play not bad. Here. You can sacrifice the imps first. I don't think it does that much, though. To be honest, it's stalling for the inevitable. But he might just be dead next turn. Or very very close to that. With the anti heal bot and the ordering farce here, I don't think Strife goes at any risk of dying. He's got 18 effective health with those giants, and another possible 11 with the heal bot and the ordering. If you disregard the fact that his opponent might even have to trade into the heal bot for another three. Wow, this sucks so bad. <laughs> to say the least, yeah, I think Thais's position is pretty much There's forfeited. There's no way you can win. Yeah. No way. Well, a lot of waiting, and we got a really fast Zoo versus Handlock game. That was much faster than I expected. But I think the game somewhat played itself out. Like the, I, I think Thais really got baited by that Sun Fury early on. I, I'll have True. to, and I'd have to ask him what he, uh, what he thought his opponent had. I'm really curious. That was really, really risky. He, uh, well, let's be honest. He, he would have had a really tough time either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? would have been difficult no matter what. It's not like he made a, ma a bad play, right? It's just that Strife Crow happened to have the exact answers he needed to just punch punish his opponent left and right because 
if he gets a big Twilight Drake with a taunt, that's problematic. The moment he gets Sludge Belchers down, that's also annoying, especially when you've seen a Hellfire. Now you're running out of steam and you really need to hope the top deck back-to-back -back answers to your handlock opponent, which, you know, um, Vice might have not even had in this deck. Mm -hmm. That's true. Well, at least um, Strive Crow locked his handlock, which is important, I think, in this situation, right? Tice is it really playing... is, yeah. Well, maybe not. There's Rogan, Rogan Mage, though. Yeah. How, how big of a... The Mage is, is a... If that's a freeze mage, then the matchup between freeze mage and handlock is heavily favoring mage. But the rogue is um, really a tough call, so maybe it doesn't matter so much. Yeah, so we'll have to see exactly what the next play, the the next decks are. So Strive Crow has his lock warlock out. He's got hunter and druid left, which is a big deal. Um, we mentioned the druid's possible, you know, tough matchups coming up with mm -hmm. the lineup that Tice has with rogue mage and warlock versus druid. You're generally in a pretty good position. I would say that if Life Co uh, if Strive Crow <laughs> will bring Hunter now, he will probably win because he has many, many favorite matchups. But um, third match is going to be difficult. Yeah, the third, it? third, fourth, and fifth match will be difficult. That's what I predict. Yeah, so Strive Crow does bring out the Hunter. He does bring out the Hunter, and Thais is going to be going for his Mage versus Strive Crow's Hunter. We'll see exactly how that goes. If it's Freeze Mage, it's not that bad of a matchup for the Freeze Mage. If you yeah, find the true. Ice Bearers early, um, that turnaround, you know, since Flare got removed from the game effectively by getting nerfed to two mana, we just don't see it. So unless Strive Crow is playing his own Mystic, then I think this is generally a Mage. This is a slightly Mage favored fight, but. It's not guaranteed by any means. If it's a freeze mage and you want to get those mad scientists in your opening hand, so you can drop them, trade for a minion, so you basically heal yourself, and then count on ice barriers first. Yeah. Those are the most important. Ice barriers are the most important, I think, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Like, ice block is nice, but you just only need the one um, to, to stay there for the longest time. You can get the second one much later, but you need that yeah. 16 health mitigation from the ice barriers a lot. If this is, in fact, Freeze Mage, obviously, but if it is, and he does get the Ice Bearers early, then this could turn into a, you know, a win for Thais, which is going to force Strife Crow to go up with his Hunter against Rogue and Warlock. Which is not bad at all. No, against the Rogue is generally a really good matchup. Um, Warlock can depend. We saw earlier a horrendous uh, come out with Gara and, you know, with his Hunter deck versus yeah. Zoo. If that <laughs> happens again, it's going to be really painful, but generally speaking, I'd say Hunter is not that bad off. If they get a decent start. No, they're not. But, you know, <laughs> what paid off for Fraser there is the fact that he had two defensive Argus. That was the sole reason he basically was winning right. that game. Because he, he was putting a lot stopped. of damage, but he was just, you know, mitigating any kind of attack from the Hunter. It's a mech mage. Oh. Well, hello there. I wasn't anticipating that. Me neither. Like at all. Hmm. So you keep the Nitron, you keep the Snow Trucker, and you mulligan away the Goblin Bless Mage. Mm, probably. Yeah, I don't think you want to keep the ball. I mean, how likely are you to get. I mean, how bad is it of a card, though? In this matchup, like, the, the Anoitron and Snow Trucker are amazing. Like, I'll give you that much. Those two cards here are stellar. The thing is, he's probably going to be looking for another 2-drop. Hmm. I mean, how like if you get Tinkertown, how good is it? It's pretty bad, right? Like, what are the alternatives that you want instead of Blast Mage? Clockwork Gnome, probably. That's a given. Um, Mech Warper would be semi-decent, but probably not. I wonder what he's going to be hoping for. Clockwork is probably the best one. Probably. Oh, he doubled Snow Trigger. It's not bad at all. And you have the answer for Knife Juggler. So that's yeah, the Frostbolt is a great, great draw here against the Juggler openers. I would say there's a Mad Scientist turn. Then you can trade with uh, Snow Truggers. Or Mech Warpers. The great thing about Glaive Zuka with Mad Scientist is that it allows you to kill off, you know, Anoyotron, Snow Chugger, Mech Warper, just about anything your opponent plays. So, generally speaking, yeah, I'd have to agree with you. I think this is a great Mad Scientist play. But there is an abusive, so you could play the creeper. But like you still killed two threes. I guess Mad Scientist yeah, but... is just too good to pass. 
you want to increase the chances of drawing something other than explosive trap. Yep. I wonder if he plays any traps besides that one. Well, Strife Crow is going to be getting uh, a free snow checker to feast on. Actually, do you play Lepernome with Abusive or Glaive Zuka? I would favor the Glaive Zuka. Because you don't get board presence after that, right? Because you That's sacrifice true. your only board presence by throwing the Glaive Zuka in. So what about Haunted Creeper and just good face? So he's not considering, or at least he doesn't want to do the abusive Lepernome, at least as much as I feel like it might be good. I'll we'll have to see. I think it's funny that this is actually ending up as a complex decision to make. <laughs> like, I actually have a hard time believing it, but it, it sort of is. Alright, well in the end he does go for that, so the Mad Scientist is going to show that Snow Chugger. We'll show them all. All the snow chuggers. And Tyx has the mirror entity, which is awful. That's a draw. Every single time. Yeah, you, you just want to get Mad Scientist. Is the only weakness of it. I think for a while, was it Thighs that just phased them out of his deck? Or was it RDU? I remember one of the two players cut out uh, one of those two cards from their mech mage entirely, if I remember. I think it was RDU, but I'm not sure. Yeah, that's the kind of that's the type of call that I fully expect RDU to do. Strife Crow does pick up a second Mad Scientist though at the beginning of this turn, which means he's gonna be able to get himself that second trap. Well, that you know? I don't think there's a second. Uh, uh, well, ma maybe he plays Snake Trap and then he can get the second trap. But if he plays just only two Explosive Trap, then it doesn't really matter. No, it doesn't matter for now. But I mean, it is something that he's gonna be able to get down oh, the line wow. if the first one does get triggered. This is awful. Well, he yeah. plays Snow Trucker and Pink. There's That's pretty to... good, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but um, you're still not in a great spot. Well, turn 5, Strike will probably just go with um, Nav Juggler, Mad Scientist, hoped for the ping for Chugger. Are things improving, though, for Thais, curving into the mid game? Maybe if he finds a really good. I mean, that low up is great, don't get me wrong, but. She's not addressing everything. Interesting. Aha. Uh -huh. Hmm. That's now the question I... we have to ask. I didn't anticipate that at all. Can we see the trap? Is it an explosive trap? It is explosive trap. We just have to assume that he plays snake now. We're trying to bluff his opponent into playing into snake at least. Yeah. Or he's forcing the opponent to attack face and then Trigger the trap, leaving a mad scientist alive. Now Tys is kind of baffled here. No, like, it, the problem is it's an amazing bluff, because whatever you do, you risk getting punished either way. Well, there are two traps. So there's going to be a snake trap, probably. I think you have to play assuming that's the case, right? It is snake. Alright, we received word from the admins that they, in fact, have spotted the snake trap. Hmm. Wow, what a terrible position here. You can't deal with the minions because snakes come out. You don't have the blast mage to get rid of them. If, even if you did, it's not guaranteed. Thais is in a bit of a pickle here. He is, but it's still winnable. Like, it's 10 to 5, you have 25 health. Well, okay, 10 to 4, basically, basically because Strife didn't do yet anything. In 10 to 5, I would say weapon, face, hero power, hunted creeper, face. I think that's the, the right play, because you have two traps to trigger in the near future. Um, if you play the juggler, though, I think it's not even that bad because of snake trap, and you're forcing a frost bolt, which means he plays less minions. I don't even dislike the idea of the Knife Juggler because of Snake and the Hunter Creeper being able to pop. But you have to put your opponent on the range of having a Frost Bolt since he's been playing so slowly. Alright, Strike Hero powers down and that'll be it for the turn. So 
Lothias knows there's a snake trap. He's just gonna have to go full face from now on, I believe. Yep. But the Anoitron can change a lot. Yeah, Cogmaster, Anoitron, Maranti together could do a lot of work. It doesn't play around Animal Companion. So, so that's unfortunate. But Lotep is more important than the Cogmaster or Maranti. M he might be thinking about using Frostbolt face now. Yeah, because there's three attack on that weapon, that's a guaranteed way to kill Lothab, if anything. But because of the Anoitron that's likely to come out, I don't think we'll see that. So At least the Hounds would be so sick, though, for Strife Crow. Like, on top of everything else, just be an extra little bit of value. And the Animal mm -hmm. Companion, if mm -hmm. it gets Leoc when Snake's been popped. Wow. Man, so many things are good here. I still think he will go for the mana efficient play. Yeah. Good for him well, that he keeps the Frostbolt for a crucial turn, I think. Yeah, it's gonna come in handy a bit later, perhaps either for like a huge burst of damage to the opponent, um, or to just remove a minion. It's just, oh, that's clogging oh, that's Strife Crow's hand. Yeah, what a that's terrible really bad. card to find. Well, Thais might be able to get that Ragnaros value. I say might. Tentatively, he might, because Ragnaros is very strong against hunters. If only because you don't have to work, like play into anything, and it's just free damage going face mm -hmm. over the board. Mirror Entity. Okay. This is value now for Ties. Yeah. And Leok will deal with the Anoitron. That's important. We would have dealt with it anyway, right? With the weapon plus, yeah, you attack with the creeper, then... Yeah, right, what I'm talking about. Now. Then weapon. Wouldn't have changed anything. Now he finds a mad scientist for that second Meredity. We'll have to see, though, what Thais decides to no make mech. of his play here. The Cogmaster is useless. You have to frostbolt the juggler, right? I would say so. Can you can you actually afford just punching face, like, really hard? Five, six, nine, twelve. Hmm. And that's pretty risky. I, I would say you still frostbolt the knife juggler. Yeah, yeah, if you frostbolt the juggler, and then you just like drop mad scientist, go full face, and no, see what, what happens. If, if you hit the hunted creeper of the mad scientist, that really blows. Uh, it's pretty bad, but I mean, it's a one in three. I think it's a chance you have to take. Oh, that's you can so always bad. ping one of the spiders, right? If it happens, so it doesn't oh, really yeah, matter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it's really that's not true. that big of a deal. Well, I suspect Thais will be going on the offensive here he for the to. rest of the game. And Strife Crow is going to be playing defensively from now on. He needs to find Unleash the Hounds, or at least he wants to. That much I can tell you. He has to kill the Lotep and the Nav Juggler. Those two are really important. Yep. Oh, there's a possible uh, close lethal on either side in the next two turns for sure. Kill Command, well, that will help. Will it? It will. I mean, it'll kill a Lotep. Yeah, it will kill the Lotep. Then you use the Haunted Creeper for Knife Juggler. Juggler. Yeah. You kill the Cogmaster with the weapon, and you leave the Mad well, Scientist. You, can, you could kill the Mad Scientist with Leoc if you want. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You don't have to. Yeah, that makes sense. Up. Yeah. But this makes sense. Then Ragnaros has really little value. Well, Strife was thinking this through. Anyway. Yeah, we'll have to see. I really think, though, that Kill Command on Lothab is the most likely, if not the only play that he can make. I mean, Glaive Zooka... Actually, wait, what if you attack him like the Cogmaster, then you Glaive Zooka to override your bow, buffs up the Creeper, and then you smash that into Lothab instead? That lets you keep the Kill Command? No, I don't think that's something he'll want to do. Actually, I think like using Glaive Zuka as a buff card isn't even bad. I think that he might just do that. Hmm. Is he is he thinking about it? Uh, probably not. Never mind. Change of plans. All right. Well. So he saves. He values. Clean, he, he, uh, sorry, but he values the one HP. On Leok more than one HP on his face. Wait, is is he? No, he didn't kill the med centers at all. Yeah, he just went face with the bow. I... This Three is plus. 
so you, you can do you, wait if you play fireball to the face and pink face oh man thais is gonna is gonna i think thais if he hits a minion here oh <gasps> wow wait Okay, that is mind. it! Oh my goodness! The only thing that Rag couldn't hit was the face. Oh wow. He just couldn't afford it. Oh wow. What a crushing blow. I was thinking just about fireballing face and pinging one of the creatures to be the safest bet. And that is gonna be game here. Strifeco is gonna be up 2-0 versus Thais. As you said, this Hunter had a pretty good chance against the lineup that um, Thais brought. But then again, Strifeco is still down to his last deck, the Druid deck, yep. against the entire lineup from Thais. Rogue, Mage, and Warlock decks that we know are typically okay against Druid. So we'll have to see exactly how those games pan out. But there's a possible reverse sweep on the horizon, but with a 2-0 lead, all it takes is a bit of luck on Strifeco's side, right? Like, variants can... Oh give you a win out of three games he needs those innovates for those necks and for those druid of the flames well, i'm not sure if he, if he is playing that yeah i don't I, well it's possible a lot of people have been uh and we saw strike will bring goblin sapper in mill rogue recently so i wouldn't be surprised if he's willing to experiment with druid a bit more and maybe put in druid of the flame uh, but we'll see exactly how that goes. It'll be Thais's Mage versus Stripecrow's Druid. Thais obviously playing Mech Mage, as we just saw. Mm -hmm. So it's a very good matchup for Thais here. Yep. But, but still. Druid can take games off of anyone. Of course. Give me those innervates. Especially if there will be a mind control tech, which can turn the game around against Mech Mage. Yeah, it's a pretty common tech as well. Uh, Stripecrow has played it quite a bit. So is Thais, actually. Thais has played quite a bit of mind control text in his Druid mm -hmm. as an answer to the aggressive metagame. And perhaps that's actually much better than Druid of the Flame by default. Now that I think <laughs> of it, we, talk, we talked about yeah. that, right? The, the, the aggro counter value of Druid of the Flame. Druid of the Flame might be better against Face Hunter, but worse against Mech Mage, for instance. Well, it's better when you innovate it on Tin 1. Exactly. Whereas MC Tech is kind of just a 3 3 body. Mm hmm. So it's exactly like Shadow Next Ram has innovated on Tin 1, and then it doesn't, then it just doesn't grow. That's yeah. it. Well, we'll see how that goes. Druid versus Mech Mage. There is an innovate. But there is an amazing hand for Strive Crow. And for Thais, too. And for Thais. Both players have a sick hand here. It might come down to who gets the better follow ups. Look, wow. Tin 1 Cogmaster into Tin 2 Mech Warper and Noitron. Wow. Hello, hello, hello. And this the turn great. three Tinker Town on the back end is just, you know, a little bit of a a little bit of a bonus to curve perfectly. This I could be a blowout, this is a but really great opening hand for Ties. And he even favors the coin uh hand. Yeah, it's a great one. I mean having Mech Warper with the coin makes your matchups, your early game so much more consistent uh, as a mech mage. Like, the Mech Warper is basically only useful without the coin on turn 3-4 most of the time. Um, but in this case, when you have the coin, you can actually compound the advantage of tempo that it can give you by, you know, doing it that much earlier. Wild Grove. Well, this is... <laughs> actually, the and Wrath and Wild Grove... The Wrath uh, is really important. Uh, I think the Wrath is what Strifeco really wants. Alright, Thais sees the shade. Second Cogmaster. That's interesting. I, I think you can't play that. No, not with the Mech Warper and the coin in hand. I think that's a bit yeah. of an overextension to coin it out this early. The problem is if you play Cogmaster, it's just, it's just trading for the next. You give it a shot, right? Because he might unstell the shade right but now, and then that he gives will, you. But you have yeah. no force bolt, so why would you do this? Well, you're playing an Oichon next turn, right? But that doesn't help any. Uh, that doesn't help. Well, you can ping and trade with the Oichon over the next two turns. Usually, you should be able to do it. That's just a, such a huge tempo loss you can't afford. So you just don't play anything. Well, it's better to play it than not play it. You have two of the Cogmasters. 
I mean, you could play two Cogmasters into just an Oitron turn two yeah, and then I, kill the I, Shade. I think... That's probably a really good line of play, but they're both dying if the Wrath is played. You'll just do your best, I guess. Thais has to weigh the value of the Cogmasters over that of a really good turn two with the Make Warper. And he just passes. <laughs> Strike is like, what? Is this Strike Pro? Yeah. <laughs> is this Life Coach playing the long game with Mech Mage? Well, Strife Crow gets to pick up a free wild growth. Definitely something he will be happy about. Mad Scientist, this is not a bad, bad draw. I would say this is a Mad Scientist turn. And then you go for a really sick Mech Warper turn sometime yeah. in the mid game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alright, that's, that's not even bad actually, because it prevents the Druid from snowballing out of control on turn 5 by having the Mirror Entity set up. I do like that line of play. Dice opts for a different line of play with the Cogmaster and Oyotron play. Do you like this? I'm not sure if I like this. I mean, it plays into Keeper really heavily, but I don't know what he's hoping to get in the end. In a, into a ref, too. It's it plays into fall. everything. I'm trying to figure out why, but we'll see. He may and have you know, a, a master plan that has yet you know, to be revealed. You deny yourself the Mech Whipper value also. Mm -hmm. like yeah. there's, no, there's no Mech Whipper value at all now in your hand. I don't like this at all. Yeah, as I said, I'm trying to figure out what he's trying to achieve. Um, I, I can't really defend the play. I don't think it's accomplishing very much. But we'll see. Maybe this ends up transitioning better. Do you even yeah. unstealth the shade? I guess I guess you don't really need to unless Tinker Town comes up. Uh, okay, I guess you do unstealth her, but then you open the frost bolt and you get a good turn yeah, I think five. Yeah, so you're okay it. with it. I think you can skip it. If you kill it though, your turn five is guaranteed. So is it really that big of a a drawback? Like if the mage has to frost bolt turn three, you get a free ticket to turn five with Lothar or sure, Drake. Mm, yeah, you're right. Okay, I would un then the uh, un unstealth thinking unstealth forget is better. Yeah, I didn't like that. 10-2 play at all from Tice. Tice's so... early game was stifled very heavily by that Innervate Shade. Like, he opted not to do anything on turn 1. Which basically was saying, okay, I have to keep the coin for Mech Warper and do some sick things. And now, the Tinker Down to the Technician is also really bad. The Shade can just trade for it. Or just go face for 5. I would just go face. You play Would you? Will you? Yeah, I think you play Drake and go face. I mean, there's, there's no Blast Mage coming out. The Shade would die to a ping either way. Yeah, I think going face, you're right, is... It's a pretty decent line of play. Question is, what are you afraid of? If you do go face. Frostbolt ping, but that's irrelevant because it's you just substitute a 5 4 for the 4 4 Drake. Yeah, that's not important at all. Although the shade doesn't grow, like the Drake doesn't grow, which is the probably biggest factor here. So if there's a Frostbolt ping to kill it, the shade, I would then still you end go up face. getting punished by Frostbolt. Hmm. So, Mech Warper, Snow Trucker, Cogmaster, or just. Snow well, you can't Trugger, kill anything if you do that, scientist. right? You can't kill anything. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. That's the, that's the problem you're stuck in, and Dyson didn't think. get that tempo. Yeah, that's it. Wow, this, this 10 2 is just biting him so much. Mirror Entity might be a saving grace, but we'll have to see. For now, it's not looking super good. Alright, so, Lothab. Or Shade Hero Power. Lotha before Mirror Entity is probably better than waiting too long. And she's protected against Frostbolt anyway. I mean, he's protected rather. Lotha is a male. I keep forgetting. I don't know why I always keep saying she, she. It doesn't look like a girl to anyone, does it? Like, it doesn't even look like a girl to me. I guess it's just because card is a female noun in French, so I end up saying she all the time. <laughs> like, mad scientist, it's totally a she. Really? 
Yeah, look at those. Look at those. Like that hair, man. Did you recognize that haircut? Uh, I would say no. My my sisters have had it for the longest time in their childhood. Are they from The Simpsons? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, they are. Okay, makes sense now. Oh man. And Thais is in such a slow position, and there's Dr. Balance coming up. Like, he has to trade the Mad Scientist, which gives Strikeful the ability to deny the value by dropping Shade followed by Swipe. If the spell damage stays around, which it will, so that will kill a Shade that comes out of the Mirror Entity. You have to play Lothab. Yeah, that's about all you can do, is play Lothab and trade. Lothab, and you have to trade, yeah, that's very true. And I think... That might have been a mistake. No, nah, never mind. Well, you deny the Dr. Boom now. Actually, do you just drop Dr. Boom and give your opponent a 7-7 seven, seven while you punch face? Because you have a swipe. Like, it doesn't really matter. You're, you're going to hit him for 9 right now. I'm just trying to figure out... You're right. That 7-7 seven, seven doesn't mean like, anything. It almost doesn't do anything, right? Yeah. It's, it's kind of sad to say, but... And the shade doesn't fit anywhere too. It's like awful. See, and the other, so the only other thing you can do is play the Drake or the Doctor Boom. I, I like shade. If I'm gonna play Drake, I'm playing shade. Um, but the problem is then I'm opening myself up to a perfect trade. Like I'm giving the board to the opponent, he can just get it back and get the initiative. Whereas by playing Doctor Boom, I'm maintaining a bigger board than he has. That's like a marginal call, I think. So now Trapko will trade both. I would say. Probably one Drake for the other. What about Lothab? I mean, there's no card draw. Uh, it slows down the tempo from the mage because he has to ping. What if you just go full face and let the opponent deal with this? He doesn't run flame strike. He can't even cast it if he if he had it. And you're setting lethal up if he doesn't play super defensively, which you know he's not really in a you know a spot where he can do that. Oh, hello, blast mage. You would be useful in another universe at another time. It still can be useful. Yeah, you just kill Lothab and... I guess trade. you have to trade everything you've got away. Yeah, there. and go for that blast mage and of hope killing. to kill it. That's the only... That's the only comeback you can make. That buys tempo. Yeah, that's a big word. Uh, to buy tempo in this position. But yes, I think that's the only comeback mechanism he's got. Well, he's got to take it. And he's gonna go for it. Why not Snow Trigger? And the Blast Mage does not oh, even come wow. close to killing that Drake. Not even close. Well, it, that was the second best outcome. So do you just swipe? Oh man, do you just drop Dr. Boom and go face for four and set up lethal later? Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure that's got to be the play that he's considering. What else, really? Swipe would kill the Blast Mage, you can then hero power down the 2-1 or use your Shredder as a, you know, means to put even more pressure. But Dr. Boom accomplishes the same amount of pressure, if not more, by threatening, you know, Boom bot uncertainty. Alright, well Thais has no answer at all. Yep. He's, He's just... dead to Dr. Boom. It's really sad to see free out free out by Scryfro here, but to be honest, I think Ty's really misplayed on that turn two. I think it started on turn one because his, his line of play was consistent with a specific line of play on turn two. You know, his turn one line of play was consistent with something we saw coming up turn two, and then he didn't go for that. So I'm starting to question whether or not he had a line of play in mind when he passed turn one. That's really the he thing. Changed his mind. To, that, that. In the middle of the way, yeah. He yeah. went for like a completely different line of play that ended up being way too defensive against a class that you have to take the advantage on before they out tempo you through innervates or just, you know, a shade of Nags that grows up. So that's gonna be 3 0 for Strive Crow taking the series. We uh, we waited a long time for a very short series, unfortunately. Um, Thais is gonna be three to four and Strive Crow is gonna stay at the top of his group. Thais and will not be able increase, to fight for that first place. Increase his tiebreak by plus three. 
It's going to be 5-2 right now with a tiebreaker of plus 6, which makes them second best tiebreaker score. Life Coach being at the very first with plus 10, which makes him the yep. highest tiebreaker score at the moment. Uh, he's behind hyped right now. He's also two matches behind. So we'll have to see tomorrow how that goes. Uh, I just want to remind you that tomorrow, will all, all the games from Thursday will be played on Wednesday. So all those matches are going to be played a little earlier. We'll have two Life Coach matches. We'll have Show versus Zixo. Caldi versus Hyped, Brian Kibler versus Firebat, and RD versus Trump. Trump playing as well today as the last match. So I guess uh, that's a, that was a really short series, I have to say. Yeah. You can prepare yourself to, for tomorrow for a 12-hour broadcast. Yeah, we have two, two live coach matches, yeah. so that's going to be... <laughs> you know, somebody was making an argument that if Blizzard sold a microtransaction where you could change the appearance of the rope, where it's like a chain... Or other stuff like that. Life Coach's viewership on Twitch would just skyrocket because he's the only player that ever gets there consistently. <laughs> it's like, I wonder if he would buy those microtransactions because um, nobody else would, effectively. They're so unseen. Yeah, I that have could be no bad. idea. Interesting. <laughs> so the well, next match that we're going to be casting is going to be RD versus Amaz. Um, Amaz is friends. in a really tough spot right now. Amaz uh, is... 1-5, he's, you know... They had the same score that Orange did, um, or Frezar did, that is, earlier today. But Frezar won against Gara, going up 2-5. Uh, if Omaz wins this game, it's still not going to get... I don't think it's going to give him enough points to come back. But you don't want to just quit, right? It's late, late in the season in the KPL, in the league. Mm -hmm. You want to at least, you know, make it a fight until the very end. And if RDU wins this, however, that's going to... You know, much like Savic, he had a really rough start, but then picked up. That was like one of the, the first things that um, that we noticed. Savic and RDU having a really rough start. Yep. But RDU is now 3-4. So if he wins, he's going to go 4-4 four, four and possibly get a score equal uh, or similar to Savic later on. And 4-4 four, four four doesn't might... bring him yeah. out, out of uh, top 5 possibly by the end of next week. 5-4 is something that he has to do to have a chance of competing in Season 2 like automatically. Exactly. He needs to get two wins back to back. So he needs to win against Amaz this week and also needs to, to to win his match next week. So we'll be back in 10 minutes, guys, with a match RDU versus Amaz. So King Win Pro League will keep going. Do not go 